Howdy, folks, and welcome back to WandaVision. We are at episode three. Uh, we did one and two last week. They came out at the same time, both black and white, but it ended in color. So this time we're going into color. I'm guessing the 70s, if they're following the order, that looks like they started in the 50s. The second one was the 60s. Now we're in the 70s. Is it going to be based on Brady Bunch, Partridge Family? Those are the two that come to mind for the 70s for me of sitcoms. You know, typical. Uh, they're trying to do like family sitcoms, right, basically. So those are two that come to mind. I wonder if there's any other influences in here for the 70s. Or if they're going to go beyond. Maybe in this episode they go to the 80s, too. I don't know. Um, the first two episodes, mostly just the sitcom stuff with a little bit of mystery uh, thrown in. You know, that's got, got me and everybody going, hmm, I wonder what's going on here. Um, my theory is still that um, this is Wanda grieving. We've learned since, because of an interview that uh, the two stars did, that there was a deleted scene. Uh, well, and not a deleted scene. It was a tag scene that was never actually filmed, I think, uh, for Endgame, which would have shown Wanda uh, going to where Vision's body or corpse or whatever it was. What do you call it when he was ever, never a, a biological being? Anyway, <clears throat> go to where he was and basically take him. Uh, so the presumption now is, in, and I guess my theory too, would be then uh, she took him somewhere and then in her grief... She's created this this world uh, around, you know, reanimated him in a sense and created this world around uh, around them and incorporated people who were in the area. And then it looks like S.W.O.R.D. Is, is, has either they knew she took him or found out she took him and were hunting her or getting it back. I don't know hunting is the right word, right? Following, pursuing. Uh, or they noticed that this activity was starting where this, this fantasy was created um, and they've come to investigate and try to figure out how to how to help her. Um, of course, <laughs> um, Kat Dennings, who's one of my favorites, uh, both from Thor and also from Two Broke Girls, if you saw that, um, is supposed to be in it. Uh, some are speculating that she is the, uh, we saw hands in the end of the first episode op operating the console and the remote and be believed to be female hands. So some are thinking that might be her character. Um, and we've got some other guest stars. Um, and apparently the, the one saying, who's doing this to you, Wanda, is... The FBI agent, then FBI agent, maybe now SWORD agent, uh, who was in Ant-Man. So I guess we'll maybe get to see some of the outside. That's what I'm hoping this episode. You know, I don't mind we stay in the sitcom world and, and follow her, what they're doing in there. But I want to see the outside world more than just a quick second at the end of the episode, you know. I want to know what they're doing, why, what they think or what they know and what's going on there. So maybe we'll get it this episode. Uh, maybe not. A, a lot of the critics who saw the first three and reviewers who saw the first three episodes ahead of time said that episode three is where everything starts to really kind of kick off and, and, and get better, I guess, for lack of a better word. So let's start and see where, where we go. Previously. <laughs> cool intro. I also like how this intro is super long, like a lot of the intros from the 70s were. Just way too long. <laughs> It started started in like sometime in the mid late eighties where they started cutting them down a bit, and then by the nineties, of course, they became like ten second intros, which was annoying. But it, it, the super extended intro is just hilarious, and it's I see little influences from Brady Bunch. I see little influences from Partridge Family, especially the the singing too is is kind of a kind of a Partridge Family sort of thing. But um, I don't know. I still I can't detect any other influence yet. Um, we'll keep watching. We'll see what happens. I mean, the show hasn't started. This is just the intro. The intro is <laughs> the intro is like a minute and a half long. Okay, if this isn't a Brady Bunch kind of reference, I don't know what is. But anyway, in color. I don't know why I would say in color. In the 70s, I don't think we did a... Early 70s, you would see in color. Like, I'm thinking like Streets of San Francisco, things like that. But uh, it's still funny. Holiday. Hey, Herb. Hey, buddy. Um, Herb? Hey, Herb. Tell from this the staircase back there is also very Brady Bunch. It's actually kind of a tri-level almost. There's the entry level, and then they go step down, it looks like. So very Brady Bunch. Okay. But the colors of these windows is very Partridge Family. Like I said, I think those are the two main influences. To be a proud... Something else that occurred to me, though, just to go back to the the neighbor cutting through the the cinder block wall. It looked like a cinder block wall. And then acknowledging, oh, I guess I did, and then keep cutting. It's almost like a rebellious act, sort of like what the... Um, the wife of the boss did in the first episode where she kept telling Wanda, stop it, stop it. Uh, at first she was saying it to uh, 
her husband, but then she turned to Wanda. We saw she was looking at Wanda and saying, stop it. It's like the people inside know deep down. They don't know, like maybe on the surface, but they know deep down they're not supposed to be here, that somebody is doing this to them. It's like a dream or something, and they're like forcing, they're trying to force their way out of it or force their way to wake up, maybe if they think it's a dream. Um, I don't know. That's kind of the impression I got from him continuing to cut through like that. But again, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it stopped. You did it. Oh, imagine what she'll do when the real labor starts, yeah. Is that Emma Caulfield's character? It is. Oh, thank God. <laughs> whoa. 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 Look at... Whoa. Okay. So we, we talked before about how in the comics she had twins. Um... If she's supposed to be six, seven months, I think that's roughly uh, where she is now. Because he said third trimester, and and they were they targeted six months last time they checked. Um, that's too big uh, for that. Um, I'm <laughs> I'm only going off of uh, my experience. We had two kids, so but um, wow, that looks pretty big. I would bet twins uh, if I put my money on it right now. Hopefully, or at this rate, we'll know by the end of the episode. But <laughs> that's my thought. Yeah, that's what I said. Know it's my fault? But it's more than that, isn't it? Oh, he's starting to figure it out too. Even though he's not real. This room is his heart. He doesn't want him to figure it out. Whoa. Yes, I know what you mean. Whoa, I didn't do that. Proof is Did she do that? Oh. Wow. That's freaky. Just like last time when she did the rewind, it looked like she almost did a digital, like what I'm doing here in Hulu and in, uh, in Hulu and in in Disney Plus. I almost did a digital one of those. Outside with her. Yeah. That that's cool and freak it freaked me out the first time. It's like, what do I got? Some kind of a glitch? Some internet glitch? Is it a playback glitch? Did they mess up on the edit? But that is really kind of cool. Yes, I know what you mean. We are And now he gives a totally different answer. Tommy. Yeah. <laughs> he doesn't breathe. <laughs> Is that her water breaking? Yes. The rain? Water just broke. Yep. Yes, dear. <laughs> Another commercial, huh? What your problems? Calgon, take me away. Is she hearing a baby? She's got one in her belly still. Is that how they're gonna do twins? Thank you. I love though they're using the old trick that that's off was often done back then. They didn't want to have, if, if a, a female star of a show got pregnant, they usually didn't want to represent that at any point for a number of reasons. Um, usually because it didn't play into the story of the show or that it kind of broke the show out of its cycle of each episode being a standalone episode uh, if, if a pregnancy was seen being developed. So they would often hide the pregnancy behind a table, behind a bowl of fruit. <laughs> I think bowls of fruit have been used, so I find that funny. Is that a stork <laughs> delivering a baby back there? <laughs> oh, I get the, rep the, the I get the symbolism going on here. She is she needs to deliver the baby. I get it. I get it. I, I now I finally get it. The why the 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 stork or whatever you want to call it is here because she's um she needs to deliver this baby. The stork is here to represent that and is you know, kind of being a pain because it's like, I'm here, I'm here, baby's come, baby's here. And she's like, no, there's a, get, I, go away, not the, not the right time. And you, you saw the little breathing she did. So it's just, it's kind of a visual representation of that. And when she tried to make it go away, I think that was her own subconscious basically saying, nope, nope, this is what you wanted. It's going to happen. <laughs> so she's trying to fight her own magic and it's not working. <laughs> left his wife in the car. I'm trying to figure out if she <clears throat> magically made herself pregnant. Why can't she magically deliver? Or is this part of it? Does she want to go through this and, and feel the, the actual delivery? Maybe that's part of it. I don't know. But it's a TV, it's a 70s TV delivery anyway. <laughs> the 70s TV deliveries are hilarious because 
you know, there's there's just a little bit of pushing if 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 they even show that part, and then suddenly a child that is um, looking at it, that infant is uh, I don't know, a couple months old. <laughs> it's definitely not a newborn. If you've ever seen a newborn, that ain't a newborn. Is there going to be a second one? Wouldn't the doctor want to check her out? See if she's okay? Even though this is all quote-unquote fake, it's just touching. I love it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I paused it just to talk about, you know, what it's like to when you have a, a baby born. And she's screaming because the second one's coming. Here it comes. I don't think it's going to be Billy. I think it's going to be a girl. No, nope, both boy boys. Never mind. All them hard to escape. Wow, there's another one. There's another one of the hints. Another subconscious element of one of the people here, one of the characters, if you will, realizing that they that there's something wrong, and Vision again sensing it. If he goes and confronts Wanda again, is she going to just rewind again? The strong lady. Oh. There's a lot of. <clears throat> speculation I've heard that Agnes here is absolutely 100% fully aware of what's going on not like the rest of them where she's kind of subconsciously aware that something's wrong that she actually knows exactly what's wrong there's some people saying that she might be a certain character in the comics that could have participated with Wanda she could be doing this to Wanda theoretically or she could have participated with Wanda to create this or is aware of it but otherwise it somehow is immune from the illusion and everything she's been doing has been playing along, knowing exactly what's going on. Um, and they're almost giving a little bit of that here too. So I'm curious what will happen, what we'll find out about her. She's snapping out of it. Geraldine snapping out of it. She, I mean, she's got a definite confused snapping out of it sort of look on her face. Yep. What did you say? Oh, so. Oh, okay. I mean, I'd always assume that Geraldine, because she is uh, working with Sword, we know that. We know from the character. Um, not the show hasn't exposed that, but I mean, we know from from casting and stuff. I'd always assume that she came in to try to contact Wanda and then got absorbed into the illusion. Um, Wanda knew who she was and got her su sucked into the illusion. But it looks like she came in and did get a little sucked into the illusion, but Wanda is unaware of her and what's going on. Either way, she she never got set up with all, the full kit, you know, of all the other characters. As we just learned, she doesn't have a house, anything. She's brand new. She just came in. Has she been playing along the whole time? I don't think she has, right? Because... Maybe? Hmm. Well, let's find out. Wanda. No, she's under the influence again. Lady. What do you mean she has no home? She's got a sword logo on her. Came because... That necklace was a sword logo. So Wanda is aware. Just like with the, the beekeeper slash environment suit or whatever he was in. She... Oh, man. This is, this is good. Hopefully... We get to see the outside now. Oh, is this from the trailer where she gets kicked out? Wanda, that macrame is not gonna hit okay, this has a total vibe. I know somebody mentioned this a long time ago. Um, one of the critics or reviewers mentioned this. This, this sequence has got a total vibe of that old classic Twilight Zone episode where the little boy has omnipotent. He's omnipotent. He has all, he's all powerful. And he basically turns this town into what he wants it to be and everybody knows but they play along and they they have to fight you know like the the if somebody starts to to get upset or question it or get fed up and wants to quit the others are like no no shut up stop it uh, i it, it's almost like every single person knows but if every single person knows why do they continue to to do the act like uh like uh, uh Emma Caulfield's character and her husband character why do they continue the act when Wanda's not looking? Wow, this is this is kind of deep. It really gets you thinking. So I, I can understand why they said episode three gets gets going good. So, <laughs> what happened to Geraldine? Yeah. 
We're going widescreen. And there she is, kicked out. I mean, that's all we saw of it, but Westview, the town, is surrounded by... It's encased in some sort of energy bubble. And you see the lights all pointing in. And the base camp set outside. outside. It's not like it's expanding at all. She just got this, this, this orb where she's created this illusion. Uh, and she's living through these TV shows in it. And um, Geraldine, agent of S.W.O.R.D., I guess... Just got expelled because she snuck in somehow underneath Wanda's nose and Wanda finally realized she wasn't there to begin with and she's not one of her characters. Kicked her out. So just a quick check to make sure there's no in credit scene again. <laughs> They're going to sneak one in one of these times and we're all going to miss it. I don't see one. Okay, so it's just the normal credits, which are really cool. Uh, the RGB credits like I talked about. Uh, very cool for the different color pixels in a television. So, um, wow, we did get a, a finally a reveal. I, I, this is one. There, there's that argument, that long running argument about should you watch trailers for something that you really want to enjoy fresh? Um, because the trailers told us all along that there were there were people outside. We saw in the trailer. We saw Geraldine get kicked out. Um, we know about the sword people on the outside. Uh, all of that from the trailers. But if you watch the show and all you've watched was a show, this was a total shock. It's like, whoa, whoa, what's going on? Whoa. You know, and you finally realize that uh, that the town is is uh, under the influence of Wanda, which we kind of guessed. The trailer didn't clearly say that. We kind of guessed it. But now the show is is kind of confirming that with the, the, the energy kind of field you saw right at the very end uh, surrounding it and the energy field that where, where Geraldine was invisible inside it. The whole town appeared to be invisible inside it and then appeared coming out of it. Uh, she's still in her clothing, so she must have snuck in in that period clothing. But that's weird because she snuck in in the 60s episode, episode two. And, it, and she wasn't wearing that stuff. So if she didn't have a how home, or, maybe she was coming in and out. Well, can she come out? If they found a way in and out, like the sewer system, like with the beekeeper... I'll call, keep calling him a beekeeper because that's what he appeared as. Then maybe Sword has a way in and then a way back out. So maybe she's been going in. The Geraldine character has been going in. Um, and uh, maybe we're finding her way back out. And maybe when she's in there, she's just a little confused because of the power of Wanda's illusion. That it's really kind of taking effect and, and affecting her. Um, so maybe she comes in and out. Maybe she's able to. Or maybe they would extract her. Maybe that's what the beekeeper was trying to do was come in and come out, you know, come back in and extract her or something. Huh. Um so maybe that means in episode four <laughs> we can get a few scenes outside uh, instead of everything on the inside. But we got the twins. Um they're twin boys. I don't know from the comics. I think they might have been twin boys, but I think in one iteration I heard that they might have been a boy and a girl, I'm not sure. Oh, maybe I'm thinking of Wanda and her brother, of course, they're a boy and a girl. But I did enjoy the nod back to uh, Age of Ultron and her brother, for that matter. Um, that was good, and it, it served a really good point of of allowing the Geraldine character to have that bit of of awareness enough to comment about her brother, which of course triggered the whole thing. Uh, Vision is having doubts. Uh, he's realizing something's wrong. He is. See, I was gonna say he's artificial. He's made up that she's created him, but has she created him? Or did she alter reality to reanimate him, his actual body? Hmm. You might argue she couldn't replicate, uh, the, the, was it the Mind Stone that he had? She couldn't replicate that, so she couldn't complete him. But could she have reanimated his body and put a personality the, as she remembered it? Uh, the personality, mentality, memories as she remembered them all into him. And so he's real now again. And she's just creating this illusion around both of them so that they can enjoy some time alone, basically. Um, and But in either way, if he's completely fabricated or he's been restored to the best of her ability, he's starting to realize something is wrong, right? 
I mean, at the very beginning, they knew something was a little up because they couldn't remember how they got there um, or what, why they were there. But he's starting to realize something is really wrong. And, of course, the neighbors are all starting to crack. Maybe it's a sign that they're all just starting to crack. I mean, last episode we got um, Emma Caulfield's character uh, you know, saying about how they've been talking about you. We know, you know everybody's been talking about you and there's something wrong with you and all that. And then the radio thing, and she kind of snaps out of it for a second. Um, McCaulfield does, and and then snaps back into it when the when the glass breaks, and she's cut. Um, so they've all been doing that, but it looks like it maybe it's falling apart. Is what I'm trying to get at. Maybe the the illusion Wanda's just not able to maintain it and sustain it this long, and it's just starting to drain her, perhaps, and it's starting to crack. And maybe it'll all come cracking down at some point. Now, in the same interview, again, here's the argument about should you. Watch trailers. Should you listen to interviews? Because in the same interview with the stars, um, he, it was mentioned that, um, or stated by the actors, that they did sitcom um, pieces, for lack of a better word, uh, in the fifties, sixties, seventies, eighties, nineties, and the the noughts. Uh, so we're in the seventies. So we've got eighties, nineties, noughts left. Three more, and we're at episode three. How many episodes are in this season? Is it six? Or is it... I think it was more than six, wasn't it? I have to go to IMDb and see if what WandaVision says in typing with one hand. Guys, it's not easy on the other screen. WandaVision 2021. Let's confirm how many episodes. Nine episodes. So we have 50s, 60s, 70s. Although... Now in color shows the wrong uh, thumbnail in IMDb. It shows one from the 80s, I think. Uh, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, noughts, and then there's three more episodes after that. Okay, so we are definitely leaving the illusion, I guess, if they're going to continue one decade per, per, uh, per episode. We're definitely going to be leaving the illusion at some point here. But that's exciting, because... Uh, again, the question there's there's a couple things. One, um, we know the outside now. We're aware of it. Everybody, even casual viewers, are now aware of it. Uh, we'll probably get some more time out there. I, I hope I I hope they don't do an entire episode out there and then come back for another episode and kind of flip flop like that. I I wouldn't want that. But I would like a little bit from both uh, during the course of each episode. That would be nice. Um, and then at some point they're going to get out of it completely and fight some big bad or something or something. <laughs> Uh, is there a big bad here? Uh, is that character, um, Agnes, is she the big bad? Um, as some people had speculated. Or is there somebody else at play here? Or is Wanda the big bad? And uh, everybody has to fight her and calm her down, basically. Um, knock her out of her grief uh, that seems to be doing all of this. I don't think so. I think, I think there's going to be some other big bad or some other force. Or maybe Dr. Sh She's going to... This is supposedly setting up Doctor Strange, the next movie. Are we going to get an appearance by Doctor Strange in this? Is he going to have to come to help in this, finally? Is he like one of the only people who can do it? Um, that would be kind of cool. I hope that happens. But on the other side, I, I wonder about these people. The vision that she's created or restored. The children that she's now May, uh, created and put into existence are they in existence everywhere or are they only in existence in her fantasy world when this all comes down and everybody goes everybody who was in there as, nor as people come back to normal is she still going to have two children and is she still going to have vision and what form will they take I mean that, that would be kind of interesting and then there's all talk about the mutants right everybody's saying that this might be a way for Marvel to introduce the mutants, but I don't think it'll be in this show because, you know, Wanda's famously ended all mutants in the comics. And then some people are saying, well, it would be kind of um, fitting for her to create all mutants in the, T in the, in the MCU uh, since they didn't exist before because of the whole Fox thing. Um, and if that happens, I don't think it would happen in here. Maybe it'll happen in Doctor Strange or maybe it'll be, I, I don't know about them, her creating mutants, but maybe, you know, multiverse thing, you know, the mutants become... Uh, part of our universe as well. Anyway, whatever. I'm I'm rambling now. 
Uh, this was good. This was a lot better than the first two episodes. I'm hoping that my co-hosts on the podcast who are a little distressed at the first two episodes watch this and are enjoying it a lot more. Uh, it's got me a, li- a lot more excited uh, for what what's going to come in the next episode. So let me know what you guys think in the comments. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.